Welcome to the lecture series on linear algebra. In the previous lectures, we have seen the definition of a vector space and we have seen several examples of a vector space and not a vector space as well. In this lecture too, we are going to continue with the same idea. That is, we are going to continue with the vector spaces only. Okay. Here, in this lecture, let us see V to be, uh, let us consider V to be the set of real numbers and F to be the set of Z7. Here, it means it has only 0 till 6. Okay. We know that uh, this is an non-empty set and we know this is a field. In order to define a vector space, we need a non-empty set and a field. It is enough to define a vector space. Now, here also what we are saying, going to say is that addition and scalar multiplication are defined in usual sense. Because this is consisting of numbers and this is also consisting of numbers. So in the usual sense only we have defined, uh, we are going to assume that uh, the operations are defined in usual sense. Now we are going to check whether this forms a vector space or not. Okay, in this case, uh, to be more general, we are trying to verify an infinite set is going to form a vector space over a finite field or not. This is what we are going to do in this. Okay, so we know that R with respect to addition is abelian group. So it is satisfying that condition. Okay. Now if we take uh, an element and if we add two elements in R, is it going to be this or not? This we need to check. Okay. Uh, this is a valid one as of now. Okay. We can check that too. If we add two real numbers and uh, applying this and we are applying this and are going to check it whether this is going to get satisfied or not this is what we need to check as well as addition of two scalars and with this and multiply that this thing is going to be this or not and uh, we have to focus on the zero element and unit element as well before that let us see whether this holds or not okay before getting into this let us revisit only for these two properties. Let us revisit to the definition of a vector space. Why, why alone these two properties? Let us see those things. Here we are going to say V is a vector space over F means there must be two operations namely vector addition and scalar multiplication. Where does this vector addition is defined from? It is we are going to take two elements of V and we will have to check whether it is a member of V or not. So, when seeing this as the mapping, what we have is it is a mapping from V cross V to V. Okay. What about the scalar multiplication? We are going to take an element from vector and we will have one element from scale, the field, and the resultant has to be in V. Okay. Having defined these two mappings, we will have to go through these conditions, holds or not. Okay. Suppose, come back here. So, what is the operation that is taking place here and that is taking place here? Here, this is the operation on V. Okay. And here, the this is an operation on F. Okay. So, these two addition are different. Okay. Here, these are additions in where? These are additions in V. You see the definition here. What is given? So, if you take two elements and the result is going to be in V there. And here also the resultant is going to be in V. So, this is a member, this is a member of V and this is a member of V. The similar goes here. Now, look at this scenario and let us try to say this does not form a vector space. For which, what am I going to do? Let us take uh, the 7, right? Let us take 3 and 4 in F. Right? So, 3 times of x is simply 3x and 4 times of x is going to be 4x. Okay, where does this land? This lands in V. Okay? Now, what about 3 plus 4? It is 7. So, under 
addition modulo 7 this is going to be 0 so it is going to be 0x when you add 3x plus 4x okay this has some value in r and this has some value in r okay these two are different different things you sum it up you are going to get some other value your 0x need not be equal to 3x plus 4x right this condition is not satisfied here we have not checked other conditions one condition is not satisfied it is enough to say that this does not form a vector space so in general what we can say is that an infinite set need not form a vector space over the field over finite fields okay now are there any vector spaces which form which is formed using a finite field yes there are vector spaces which are formed using a finite field and that we will see now okay uh, if in one of the previous lectures we have seen that if f is given to be a field then fn of f is a vector space what is this fn it is f cross f cross till n times okay this is going to consist elements of this form where all the entries are taken from field f when we define all these things we have not specified any condition for this field f which means it may be infinite or finite as well okay when the field itself is finite and with the help of a field we define some vector space that is also going to be infinite okay what happens if f is finite yeah with this we will get a vector space of finite numbers how many elements will be there in it okay generally uh, let us let me take f has p elements right if f, f has p elements then f power n will have how many elements fn of f this vector space is going to have p power n elements because for each position we have p possibilities so n times of p that will be p power n okay for and uh, we have one more result in uh, the abstract algebra that is a finite field will have the order of finite field is of the form p power n okay so this is here i am saying about order of finite field and i instead of order we may have this to be cardinality cardinality of finite field is always p power n where p is any prime number so based on the number of elements here we will have number of elements here right so uh, let us find the vector spaces examples of vector spaces in this lecture itself i am not going to prove uh, any more uh, examples i am go just going to state few examples okay uh, if f is a field then with the help of this field we may construct the set of polynomials this is going to consist elements of this form okay where these entries are taken from f here we are uh, okay let me write this in the form of a i x power i where i runs from 1 to infinity we may have 1 to infinity as well there is no harm in it okay uh, let this be a member in f of x and uh, i runs from 1 to infinity b i x i belongs to f of x okay suppose it has only n terms till n term and it has only till m terms means other entries are considered to be zero okay we may define and we are going we are trying to prove this forms a vector space over the field f okay so how are we going to define addition here a x per i plus summation i runs from 1 to infinity b i x per i is going to be summation i runs from 1 to infinity a i plus b i x per i suppose it has only n terms uh, for example it has only 
till the seventh row that is x bar seven and here as ten. So till seven we will have a one a naught plus b naught a one plus b one a two plus b two till a seven plus b seven. After that b eight b nine b ten alone we will have and the rest entries are going to be zero, right? So this is how we are defining the addition, the vector addition here and scalar multiplication. is going to be summation i runs from 1 to infinity alpha times of a i x bar i a term wise multiplication is taking place right whenever you have a field f with the help of this field you can always define a collection of uh, polynomials of this form and this is going to form a vector space over this setup this is under this vector addition and this scalar multiplication right so this can be any field right Therefore, your C of x, that is, collection of polynomials with complex coefficients, is going to form a vector space over the field of complex numbers, and it will also form a vector space over the field of reals as well as rationals, using the ideas that we have seen in the previous lectures. With the same idea, we can also say. Set of polynomials with real coefficients forms a vector space over reals and over rationals. Okay, and similarly, uh, polynomials with rational coefficients forms a vector space over Q. Okay, these things we have here also. We may have uh, one thing. What about the finite field? Let us see that too. the addition and the scalar multiplications are defined in the same sense that we have used for this infinite case right if it is finite we can uh, talk about uh, suppose let me have like this okay uh, where these entries are taken from f If we continue it or we stop it uh, at some point, we don't need to bother when the field is infinite. The vector space will also consist infinite number of elements. When this is going to be a finite thing, then we can talk about the uh, cardinality of this thing. Okay, so this one we may uh, like. We may define a bijection, right? This f of x, you see, uh, from zero to n we have. So, which means this can be this vector space. A bijection can be defined from this space to this space. So, the number of elements here will be the number of elements here. Here, if we have n, that is f n of n means, and if f s p elements. In the sense, it will consist of p per n plus one elements. So this is also going to consist of p per n plus one elements, right? Okay. Uh, that is the constant term may be associated with the first thing, an x term here, and x square term till x per n term. Likewise, you can write and you can make the bisection. Okay. Suppose I take a polynomial of exactly nth degree okay my uh, v is polynomials of nth degree okay uh, over the field f okay will it form a vector space that is a question now sometimes May not be, which means it need not form a vector space. That is what I am trying to say here. Why? You just see uh, here. I need to take two entries, right? Let me take a n x bar n plus a n minus one x bar n minus one plus etc. It goes a one x plus a n. Here, let me take minus a n x bar n plus some b n minus one x bar n minus. I don't know the relation between uh, 
these things a n minus 1 and b n minus 1 i don't need the relation between these two things here all the entries are taken from any field f okay the additive inverse of a n is minus a n when i add these two things okay what is going to be the degree of this thing this is degree n this has degree n this has degree n but when i add these two polynomials the degree will be less than or equals n minus 1 because if a n minus 1 is the additive inverse of b n minus 1 i will have n minus 2 i don't know about these things that is why i have written this to be less than or equals n minus 1 which means addition itself is not well defined in this case because i am taking only the nth degree polynomial okay now let me restrict my n to a particular case that is i am taking n as 0 when my n is 0 what is going to be the case my v of x or my f of x is going to be simply f because it is going to collect only what only the constants this forms the vector space every field is a vector space over itself that we have seen in one of the previous lectures so polynomials of nth degree over f is a vector space only if n is 0 right so in general what kind of polynomials can be can form a vector space polynomials of degree less than or equals n okay over f is a vector space which means you are the maximum degree can be n if you restrict that you restrict polynomials of that kind that will form a vector space okay uh, this uh, this uh, hope you have had some idea about the vector spaces over polynomials and if you consider the uh, convergence sequences over reals okay that is real sequence okay, where all the all the entries are uh, real numbers if you consider a set of this form okay uh, a set of this form this forms a vector space over the field of real numbers if it is forming a field vector space over real then it will also form a vector space over q as well right then you may collect the functions defined from any subset of r to r that is you are collecting the real valued functions okay if you collect this thing this is also forming a vector space over r okay here the addition is going to be the, for the convergence sequences the addition is going to be term based addition and the scalar multiplication is going to be term wise multiplication right here uh, your f plus g of x is defined in the sense of f of x plus g of x for all x and s this subset okay alpha times of alpha f of x is going to be alpha times of f of x and this is also true for all the elements in s if you define like this then this will also form a vector space under this addition so we have come to the end of this lecture as, as well as the concepts in vector spaces in the upcoming lecture we will uh, see about the subspaces what do we mean by a subspace how are we going to find out the subspaces right hope uh, you learned few or uh, few things from vector spaces in this lecture thank you for watching if you have any queries you can post it in the comment section that will be clarified within 24 hours of time